variant 13 AS paper 1 this is a paper I'm going to explain today this is AS economics paper 1 and in this video I'll explain you first 15 questions and in the next video I'll uh, explain next 15 questions of the same paper so starting with question number one which action would not raise the quality of a particular factor of production so examiner uh, generally bolts this word not but uh, in maximum times like students ignore this so keep in mind this is the important word you have to consider so option a is the correct answer uh, the scheme is the same you can stop the video read the question carefully and try to figure out what should be the answer then read uh, then listen to the logic that I'm going to explain you uh, so option A is correct answer capital operating a machine continuously at full capacity so if you operate a machine at full capacity continuously then quality of the factor of production that is capital will not raise or increase rather it will decrease because if you continue continuously use the machinery technology and tools they keep depreciating and their value continuously decreases instead of increasing during a period of deflation and economies aggregate monetary demand falls which function of money explains this option D is the correct answer a store of value However, this question will not be tested in AS economics now because it is not in the syllabus. Uh, however, you should keep in mind uh, this may be tested in A2. Question number three is what will usually result if production is divided into separate processes that are assigned to different people, right? So. Uh, when production process is divided we call it specialization or division of labor when one person performs one task so uh, lower output per worker no this this can't happen so option a and b can be the correct answer so we will cross these values uh, option c and d because when production is divided into separate processes each worker will specialize in one process and his performance will increase so output per worker will increase instead of uh, decreasing so examiner is saying lower output per worker so lower output per worker will not happen so no no more repetitive tasks definitely uh, when task is divided into different segments or different parts then definitely one person will repeatedly keep doing the same thing so option B is correct answer for this because we will cross this option uh, lower cost yes definitely when workers are specialized and work is divided into separate parts then cost of production will decrease so option B is the correct answer moving to question number four the diagram shows production possibility curve which combination is correct so D is the correct answer again you can stop the video read the question carefully uh, opportunity cost of producing more Y will increase and opportunity cost of producing more X will also increase because whenever the graph is concave to the origin it shows increasing opportunity cost. there are three shapes of PPC concave like this this shows increasing opportunity cost then we have graph like this this is called convex to the origin and convex to the origin graph shows decreasing opportunity cost then we have straight line that shows constant opportunity cost so option D is correct answer as per this question question number five says a government wishes to ensure adequate flood defenses are provided uh, in its coastal areas which action is most likely to be undertaken only by the government so option C is correct answer financing the defenses right uh, so since this is a public good defense is a public good so government has to finance it uh, you might be confused with other options so I can explain you those as well building the defense uh, government can take help of private sector private constructor may be appointed to build build that design may be uh, made by the private companies as well maintaining defense again it may be handed over to the private sector but finances will be provided by the government because this is funded by government 
option uh, question number 6 is consumer surplus exists in a market for rice what does this mean so c is correct answer some consumers would be willing to pay more than the market price for rice so consumer surplus is the difference between what consumers are willing to pay and what is the market price so if we find the difference that is consumer surplus sometimes consumers are willing to pay for example 10 dollars and if the consumer gets the product at 8 dollars uh, for rice then definitely he saves 2 dollars so 2 dollars he saves is consumer surplus so option c is correct answer moving to question number 7 the diagram shows the demand curve and supply curve of a product which area represents producer surplus so as per this uh, this graph equilibrium price is w equilibrium quantity is z so total payment by by the consumer here is uh, is o w y z and this is the complete area that consumers will pay uh, so a uh, producer surplus is the area above supply and below the below the equilibrium price so this is the producer surplus so to find out this area what we have to do is we have to find out the total payment that is ow yz ow yz is the total payment and uh the area above uh, above the supply curve and below uh, below equilibrium price is known as producer surplus so to find out this area what we have to do is from this whole rectangle or box we have to deduct this area so this area is o y z if we deduct this area then we will find out this area that is consumer surplus triangular area uh, if you don't understand this question th then you may write in the comment box i'll get back as soon as possible question number 8 says uh the diagram shows relationship between total expenditure and price of three products 1 2 3 which area represents the products which uh, with price elastic and price unitary elastic demand unitary elastic demand is when change in price has no impact on total expenditure and total revenue so option 1 is a unitary elastic demand because in this case total expenditure is fixed this much for example this is total expenditure whatever price is in the market uh, total expenditure is not changing so option 1 like curve 1 is a unitary elastic so in option c we found that it is unitary elastic so option c is correct answer however we have to find out elastic demand as well so 3 is the elastic demand because in case of elastic demand if we decrease price total expenditure and total revenue will increase so this is happening in this graph for example let me uh, make it clear to you uh, why fallen price is increasing total expenditure here for example as per this line 3 if price is initially p total expenditure will be let's suppose e if we decrease price from p to p1 total expenditure will increase from e to e1 and this continues so when demand is elastic a little fall in demand of uh, little fall in price leads to greater rise in demand so total expenditure and total revenue increases question number 9 is what causes an inelastic market supply curve for an agricultural product so for question number 9 answer d is correct answer the very long long time required to produce the additional output when it takes longer time to produce a product then supply will be inelastic it is the main factor that affects price elasticity of supply so d is correct answer question 10 says the diagram shows the effect of a change in the market for good x on the market for good y so this is market for good x demand is increasing and this is market for good y supply is increasing what can be concluded about the good about the goods okay so for question number 10 answer is b uh, x and y are joint in joint supply like these goods are jointly supplied jointly supplied mean if x is supplied then y will be supplied otherwise y will not be supplied like examples can be uh, like honey and bees wax they, they are in joint supply if we supply more honey then bees wax will also be supplied more similarly mutton and wool if we Uh, supply more mutton uh, that is let's suppose we uh, supply more sheep then definitely 
demand for sheep increases like demand for mutton increases then definitely more uh, uh, sheep will be supplied and more sheep if more sheep uh, are supplied then definitely uh, more wool will also be supplied so consider this is wool and this is demand for mutton if demand for mutton increases suppose this is x is mutton and y is wool so if demand for mutton increases then definitely more mutton will be available in the market and then as a result more wool will also be automatically supplied so b answer is correct answer moving to uh, the next question question number 11 and the final uh, of a major sports event is held in a stadium which has fixed capacity of 4000 people so one thing we found here is that supply will be fixed because of fixed capacity so uh, we can see that supply is fixed in option A that is 40,000 vertical straight line supply curve and in option B supply is again fixed at 40,000 in other cases supply is not fixed so we will cross them and moving to uh, the other part of the question the price for a seat is set at PF so this is price PF and this is also price PF but when the tickets go on sale all tickets are sold very quickly uh, with many disappointed people unable to buy the ticket it means there will be shortage demand will be more and supply will be less if we consider option A in option A uh, at price PF demand uh, the point where it intersects demand curve we will find out demand demand is here D1 for example this is less than 40,000 and supply is 40,000 it means in this case supply is more and demand is less but we have to find out the point where demand will be more and supply will be less because some people are disappointed and they don't get the get the ticket so in this case you can see that pri at price pf supply is 40,000 but demand is more than supply that Let, let's say it's 50,000 so in this case when more people are demanding but supply is less so some people will be disappointed and will not be able to get the ticket moving to question number 12 uh, which product has the lowest price elasticity of demand in this case option a uh, option d is the correct answer right so price elasticity of demand is calculated as percentage change in quantity demand over percentage change in price so in option b percentage in quantity demand is 0 percent percentage change in price is 10 percent so 0 percent over 10 percent is, is equal to 0 so this is perfectly inelastic so this is the lowest possible uh, price elasticity of demand in all other cases the situation is like uh, where demand is more elastic than zero in option c it will be like 5 percent over 10 percent is equal to 0 0.5 0 0.5 is definitely greater than 0 and in option b it's 5 5 5 percent over 5 percent is equal to 1 so again this is greater than 0 in case of option a 10 percent quantity demand over 0 percent change in price will be infinite infinity is definitely again uh, greater than 0 so option d is the correct answer uh, it's a mathematical rule if numerator is 0 if numerator is 0 answer will be 0 if denominator is 0 then answer will be infinite question number 13 says the market for a product is initially in equilibrium uh, which combination of changes will cause the price of the product to rise and quantity sold to fall so option b is correct answer and uh, the conditions here are that price will rise and quantity will fall so we have to prove that why it is happening in option c so we have quantity on x this is quantity and we have price on y so this is a normal demand curve and this is a normal supply curve we have to find out an initial equilibrium that is at price p and quantity q so this is origin point okay so now uh, if there is a decrease in demand that is smaller than decrease in supply then definitely this this condition will be satisfied so we have to decrease supply more right for example supply falls more so it shifts a lot to the left and there is a decrease in demand but 
de demand decrease in demand is a little lesser than the decrease in supply so demand will shift to the left and new equilibrium will take place where two blue lines intersect each other new lines so equilibrium will be now at e1 where you can see that price has increased from p to p1 and quantity has decreased from q to q1 and we were to uh, find out the point where price increases and quantity falls so option b is correct answer moving to uh, question number 14 and question number 14 says the diagram shows two demand curves and two supply curves right which combination of shifts in the demand and supply curves would result in a change in equilibrium position from h to k initially equilibrium is at h it means this will be the supply curve and this will be the demand curve and now equilibrium moves to k it means demand has shifted to the right from d to d1 and supply has shifted to the right from s to s1 so new supply and demand curves s1 and d1 intersect each other at this point so demand has increased as well as supply has also increased when demand and supply shift to the right uh, they are uh, basically increase th this represents increase in demand and supply so for question number 14 option a is correct answer increase in demand and increase in supply and other important thing that when supply increases we generally say that supply shifts to the right or we also say supply will shift downward right and for demand we say that increase in demand shifts demand curve to the right or shifts demand curve upward so these two terms are generally used so you you must know them uh, the last question for this video and then uh, in the next video you can uh, watch next 15 questions question number 15 says in 2009 the Australian government made a payment of $900 to those who earned less than $100,000 per year how would this payment be described so this payment is progressive progressive payments and pro pro progress progressive charges are basically the kind of payments and charges that reduce the gap between the rich and poor income gap between rich and poor it reduces um, the income of the rich class and it increases a little bit the income of the poor class for example we if we assume initially uh, the income of rich is much higher and the income of the poor is much lower so this much gap is already existing between them when government pays $900 to all those who are poor mean who are who earn low income then the income of these poor people will go a little higher so let's suppose income level of the poor class reaches at this point and the income of the rich class is at at the same level for example so what will happen now the gap between the rich and poor has decreased so progressive tax and prog progressive payments are the kind of payments that are also known as automatic stabilizer and they reduce the risk uh, reduce the gap between rich and income gap between rich and poor uh, in case of progressive tax government imposes high tax rate on the rich class due to which and low taxes on the poor class so what happens then is the income of poor class goes a little higher because they are paying less taxes so their disposable income will increase and disposable income of the rich will decrease a little bit because they are paying more taxes more percentage of income in taxes so now the gap between rich and poor will reduce to this to this much right so progressive taxes are the taxes that decrease income of the rich class disposable income of the rich class and increase disposable income of the poor class so it decreases gap between income gap between rich and poor and progressive payments by the government uh, are where government pays more uh, kind of payments transfer payments to the poor class so their income increases and when their income increases the gap between rich and poor class decreases so again it is also progressive